Right, welcome to um, webinar uh, concerning Retail Pro mobile POS applications. Uh, we will touch on um, a few things besides uh, mobile POS that are, um, you know, wireless or portable apps. Um, but we'll do so just to differentiate um, what makes mobile POS POS. Um, and what other solutions you might have available to you if you're interested in something else, like um, using a scanner for physical inventory um, or using um, an iPad um, app for, for physical inventory and things like that. But the focus of this um, webinar is uh, specifically what's available in mobile POS. And when we say mobile, we mean um, you can pick it up and carry it around without any wires. Okay. So, um, the solutions that um, that we show in this um, can be semi-mobile as well. When we get to the prism, um, that can be mobile. Um, it can be stationary, um, and I'll try to explain a little bit about that um, when we get to that section. All right. So, um, first um, thing that we show in uh, in this webinar is um, a uh, an application called Foundry Logic um, that is. Uh, specifically designed. Okay, my slides aren't going. Come on, and there we go. Come on, there we go. Um, so um, this this device or this app goes on a device. Um, it can be on a, um, a Honeywell Dolphin scanner. Okay, most of the people who are going to be using this are going to use this on a um, on an Apple device. So an iPod, um, an iPad, I'm demonstrating it on an iPod uh, today, um, but you can put it on either one. Um, you download it from the App Store, um, you buy a license from us, um, and then there's you know, a few things that we install on the Retail Pro computer so that the um, mobile POS can send its transactions into Retail Pro. So um, this application is not what we call a standalone application. In other words, it needs to be supported by Retail Pro. Okay, so um, there's a Retail Pro, um, either version eight or version nine, um, somewhere in the mix, so that we can um, take the item descriptions into the mobile POS, and so that when you ring things up, we can take those transactions um, and we can put them in um, to your inventory control on your Retail Pro nine. Okay, so mobile POS is specifically designed to uh, uh, create uh, sales receipts, right? Um, you also have the capability in some cases to um, start a transaction on the mobile POS, put it on hold, and pick it up um, from a Retail Pro 9 computer. I do have um, some furniture people who are using it in that way. They walk around the furniture store with their um, little iPad. Um, they start the customer transaction um, while they're walking around the store. They put it on hold and they go finish it up at the front counter, um, and so it's there's less congestion up at the front counter um, with people trying to um, you know make decisions um, and uh, get an order processed um, so they can get everything in the mobile POS before um, they get up to the front. Okay, and so the difference between POS um, and inventory scanners is an inventory application is specifically for uh, uh, creating lists of transactions for transfers um, or for physical inventory uh, for anything like that. Both, I'll show you at the you know kind of the end of the, the Foundry Logic here what the difference are differences are um, between that type of an application right and um, the uh, the mobile POS which we're basically concerned with today. Okay, so with the mobile POS right, you can do all of these things. So we're going to, um, I'm going to minimize this, okay, and I'm going to minimize this, and we're going to wake up um, my little connection to my iPad. Wake up little iPad, there we go. All right, so um, I'm, I guess I'll do this and uh, go back to it. Okay, so this is an iPad or iPod, um, just like everybody else's, all the apps or whatever. Um, Mobile POS is one app that you can download from the App Store okay, and license from us. Okay, and when you start it, um, you actually log in. 
okay, um, to uh, with using a retail pro login, so sysadmin or um, you know any of your um, usernames that are that exist in your version eight or nine, okay, can be downloaded into here. Likewise, your items um, and um, even images and other things can be downloaded um, into here, so that when you scan something, this comes with a um, or, or can fit inside, let's see, um, let me show you the little devices here. Um, this is what um, a typical iPod looks like. Um, these are a, a little handheld sled where there's a, a credit card swiper on the side, barcode reader that's triggered out the front, right? And so um, this can fit inside this, it's like a sleeve, um, and you charge it right inside this. Um, and this is what you carry around to the store to slide credit cards um, or scan out the front. Now these days, um, there, there's EMV um, capabilities, um, and there is a little device that, that hooks up to this that it gives you the EMV card reader um, capability okay, on this device. Okay, there, um, if you're using an iPad, um, there is also um, things that connect to it that allow you to scan um, and use the, the EMV chip reader. Um, you may have seen them out in the market. Um, let me go back here. Okay, um, so, oops, too far. All right, so um, we have um, a, an application that runs on Retail Pro, the Retail Pro computer that allows, it's called Retail Pro, Retail Mobile Manager. So if you have a store and you have um, one version nine or eight um, install in that store. You can have multiple POSs connected up to the um, to the same um, Retail Pro version eight or version nine. Okay. So um, this has this software is what allows the application to communicate to Retail Pro. Okay, and there's some functions in here, right? Um, this import data. This is where um, you would schedule um, the items to download to the app, and that takes place once you set it up, more or less in the background. You can schedule it, so you can tell it, you know, every day at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning, um, get this ready to download to my, um, to my mobile POS. And um, when, the mobile, when you wake up the mobile POS, they're automatically going to be refreshed um, with your data. Okay, and so you can use um, the V8 item number, um, a, a UPC, vendor UPC if you're using it, an ALU. Um, if you're V9, um, ALU um, is instead of um, item number. Okay, but anyway, um, this can be scheduled, um, and this is how the system knows what it's ringing up. Okay, and this is this happens on the version nine side. Okay, back to sleep here. Okay. All right. So, um, when you log into the mobile POS, these are receipts that I've created um, in the past. I haven't dumped them out so that we can take a look at them if we want to. But basically, I'm going to go through a sale. Right. So, um, you would click on this uh, new button up in the top. Okay. It would start a blank transaction. Okay. At this point, you could scan an, an item if you have the little sled. Um, I don't have the little sled on, on here, um, so I'm going to click on this tray down at the bottom here, little tray icon that puts me in my inventory lookup. Now I can I can type um, you know part of the description. Um, I can scroll down through here. It just depends on how um, you know much um, you know how, uh, how what you know about the item and and uh, how many items you have. I'm just going to touch on one of the things, and that's going to select it. So um, what you saw on the previous page were styles. And if I pick the style, now I can see what colors and sizes it comes in um, and how much that thing is. If I just touch on one of these to select it, okay, I get um, a little more information about it to make sure I've got the right thing. Right? So if you're doing price lookup, um, you were done in the last one, um, and you could just select it. Um, also, we have images that are downloading. This one happens to have an image, I believe. If I click the image button, that's what this thing is supposed to look like. Um, picture quality is a little terrible um, on my uh, my little interface here. I apologize, um, but 
um, you can verify that what you're selling is um, what you've actually um, have in front of you. Right, so if this is the item that you're taking, you hit the select up in the upper right-hand corner, okay, and that lists the item on the receipt. Okay, if you have to modify the item, i.e. take a discount, um, change the price, um, anything like that, um, you can um, touch that line, okay, and that opens this up where you can change the quantity, put on a discount, um, add discount reason, um, turn it into a return, all those things. Okay, so we're not going to do anything with this. So um, I've got one item. Um, I'm just going to hit the, the tray down at the bottom, pick something else, okay, um, and just select it without going any farther there. So now I have, oh, something at zero price. Nice. Um, let's see. Um, let me pick that and let me give it a price. Here, price uh, six. All right. Say that again. No, that wasn't me. That was a intercom. All right, sorry. Okay, so um, here's our items. It's you know um, collected up the tax, right? Um, we're ready to check out. We're not going to modify anything else, right? So we hit the check out button up at the top. And then down at the bottom, you can see um, the icons, right? Are we taking cash? Um, are we taking credit card? Typically, um, those are the only two options um, that people will use with this. Some people won't even use cash. Okay, they'll do strictly credit cards because they're out wandering around and they don't have a, a cash drawer readily available. Um, so for now, I'm just going to hit the little credit card icon. Okay, um, and normally, right, if you're hooked up with a, a service um, like Cayenne is um, the main one that Retail Pro uses, credit card service, um, this would go right to the um, requesting you to swipe the card. Um, so you would swipe the card um, and it would go out, um, get an authorization, come back, and the customer would sign right on the screen um, of, the, uh, of the device. All right. so for now I'm just going to pick something, okay, um, and then this is what it would look like um, when the if the transaction was authorized, okay, and um, you would finish it, you have the the option here of emailing it. Okay, so if you're going to email it, um, you can it hand enter an email, right? If you're going to print it, um, you hit the print button. Um, this would automatically come up with um, printers. Sorry, um, this one um, is a, a a remote app from the developer, so it doesn't actually physically have a printer. Um, but you would see the printer there, you would hit print receipt, okay, um, and then click the done up in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so um, once you hit the done button, um, it's going to create um, that receipt. Okay, you'll see it back on the screen um, down at the bottom here. Uh, that one for 49.78 down at the bottom is the one we just, uh, just collected, right? Um, and um, at this point, this is flying over to Retail Pro um, over your wireless interface. All right, so this screen, right, um, will clear when you log out um, generally. I have this set so that it never clears, so we can see past transactions um, just for um, this demo. Um, but normally, you would see just the transactions um, that you have done um, today or since you've logged in. Sorry, oriented that wrong. Okay, so um, that's a simple transaction, right? With a credit card, um, the um, you know you can modify the items. Um, I want to show you a little bit about the customer management um, and what you can do at the bottom of the receipt. Um, so we're going to start another new receipt. Okay, we're going to um, start with adding a customer. So this little customer icon head down at the bottom with the exclamation is indicating, hey, you haven't picked a customer. All right, so if I um, touch that icon, okay, I can search my customers. Okay, um, and so these are customers that have been preset um, in here. If you needed to add a new one, you would use this icon up in the upper um, right-hand corner. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pick um, somebody who's already in here okay, that already has an email address just so you can see um, how that works. 
All right, but you can edit um, the customer information. Anything you edit in here does go over to Retail Pro, um, so you can actively update your um, your customer data. All right, so we've selected a customer. I'm going to go back. Okay, and I'm going to go loading customer select. Sorry. Um, now that the icon down at the bottom, the little exclamation um, disappeared next to the head. And now this transaction, um, we can go through and add some items. So we're going to buy a bamboo tote bag. Um, I like the burgundy color. And select. We're going to okay, pick something else. Swim top. Great. That's what we want. OK, so I've got two things on this transaction. OK, I'm going to go to uh, checkout. Right. I'm going to um, the credit card pick the card type, and like I said, this would already be um, in swipe mode when you did this. I'm going to finish, right? And so now the email for that customer is already filled in. Okay, so um, I could just email the receipt, right? And then I wouldn't ne necessarily care about printing it, so now I'm done. Okay, so those are the options as far as finishing the sale, um, emailing it and or printing it. Um, and if everything is, is in the system, um, it's a quick touch, touch, touch. OK, so um, we're going to go um, through one more transaction so I can show you what's available cleaning out the, or, or at the bottom of the transaction. So one more um, new icon up in the upper left-hand corner. Right. Um, I'm going to uh, pick a couple items. OK, that one. OK. And then uh, this one. All right. And then the icon down in the way lower left here, the one that looks like a menu, if I touch that, okay, I can turn this transaction into a return. I can flip off the taxable, um, change the, um, the, the retail, um, the associate, um, if you're commissionable and you want somebody to, uh, else than the person who's logged in to get credit for the sale. Um, you can pick um, the associate here to give them co uh, uh, credit for the sale. And then um, we've got all this info down here that's part of regular Retail Pro um, uh, type of in information. If you use POS flags, um, if you use fees, if you want to add comments, all that's available um, down here, Okay, um, as well as selecting a customer. All right, so um, I just like to show people um, how that relates to Retail Pro um, so they can um, compare apples and apples to what happens on the Retail Pro 9. All right, so we're going to check out. OK, I'm going to do cash this time. Um, so um, here, if we're taking $40, um, we just type 40, click OK. It's going to tell me how much change down at the bottom, $1.19. I'm going to finish. Again, I have the option to email okay, um, or to print. Um, and if I don't want to do either of those, now I'm done. All right, so um, that's going through a handful of transactions. Right? Um, one of the things that I didn't show is um, how you can uh, park or put a sale on hold. Right? Um, and if you put a sale on hold, you can configure um, this to automatically send it over to Retail Pro. Um, and basically, all that is okay, is getting an item listed on here. Okay, so we're putting that. Uh, we're going back to the transaction. Okay, and then when we go to the checkout, there's a down at the bottom. There's this arrow. Okay, um, and and that arrow is the put me on hold button. Okay, so um, send to Retail Pro here. Right, would put that on hold. Oops. Um, I meant to say yes. Okay, um, And so now that transaction is a hold um, that's sent over to Retail Pro for you to finish. Okay, So those are the ways that you can use um, the, the, um, the MPOS um, that from Foundry Logic. We're going to go back a little bit um, to um, the receipt screen. I'm going to put that down for a second. And open back up my PowerPoint, right? So um, you've got um, 
uh, pictures available um, so that you can use it out on the floor um, to help customers um, you know, identify things, find out what the on hand is, um, a look at quantities from other no locations. Um, so these kind of things are available on the MPOS. Um, looking and changing and searching for customers are available on this. All of this ties back to um, your, your Retail Pro okay, um, and other things on the receipt, right? Um, changing the quantities, things that you do on, an, on a normal case um, at the end of the um, transaction as well. Okay, so um, we already covered this. Right? It's a, um, a sled that this thing fits into that gives you the peripherals, um, being the um, credit card swiper or EMV um, attachment um, and uh, barcode scanning. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through here. Right, so um, this basically shows um, a diagram of how this thing talks to Retail Pro. Right, so you can have one. Oops, sorry. Uh, one or more um, mobile devices talking to a single install of uh, retail mobile services, which resides on the computer um, where um, where your your retail pro um, database is. Right. So retail mobile services um, talks to the retail mobile manager. This is where it gets its um, items codes. Okay. When it has a transaction. Um, it comes through Retail Mobile Services into Retail Pro ECM, which is, um, if you're a V8, um, this is the equivalent of polling, okay, which takes place on a continual basis. So um, a, a transaction that you create on the MPOS within a few seconds, um, it shows up on your, on your version 8. Okay, and then you could manage it from there if you, if you wish. Okay, but the goal here is to give you a front end um, that you can carry around the store um, that has to be at least wirelessly um, connected to a V9. Okay, and so a lot of people ask, can I take this uh, like off-site? Okay, and, and the, the answer is um, yes, if you have a laptop that you take with you that has the mobile services on it and an install of your Retail Pro, either V8 or V9. Okay. Um, so it, it doesn't operate realistically over the internet back to um, the, the, the version 8 or 9. Okay? It, it really needs to be locally wireless um, to that. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so here's the devices right, that um, are not specifically MPOS, so Foundry Logic apps. Um, the um, inventory scanners, um, if you've used these in the past, right, these are for um, scanning in a list of items and reading that list into Retail Pro for the purposes of physical inventory okay, or for the purposes of receiving or transferring items. So this, these are not mobile POS. Okay? You can download the item list into them so you can verify that you're scanning the right thing. Um, but there's no credit card capability. Um, you're not. You don't have customers. You're not really making a sale um, with these items. Okay. So um, that's the you know the first half right of what we're doing here. Um, the second half of what we're doing here has to do with um, Prism. Okay, which is Retail Pros um, mobile POS. Their in-house mobile POS. And uh, Prism is um, the, the latest generation product from Retail Pro. It can function um, on a wireless basis. Um, it, it can function in some circumstances out on the internet, okay, so that um, when we, uh, you're, you're able to have a Prism install where you could put it on a Surface Pro or some device like that. Um, I even have seen it on smartphones. Um, so that it is scalable um, across a lot of different platforms. You can see uh, like the web browsers here that are supported, right? They they usually recommend uh, Chrome, okay? But um, we have a lot of people running it on Internet Explorer. I'm going to show it to you on Internet Explorer. Um, so um, it is um, independent as far as the the OS is concerned for the most part, okay? Um, 
All right, so um, we're going to go through to the next page. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how PRISM is de deployed. Again, um, PRISM is um, dependent on having a Retail Pro version 9 somewhere. Okay, so that's where the items are set up. Um, that's where um, the uh, inventory control takes place. Um, so there isn't any um, standalone uh, PRISM functionality. It's uh, dependent on Retail Pro 9 um, for um, the, say, back of house um, type of functions, right? So, but the version 9 server can be remote, okay? So you can have a version 9 server. Um, you can go through the cloud um, to a, uh, directly to a Prism device um, or to another Retail Pro V9, right? So. That's what um, that's showing right here. Okay, um, it works with uh, tablets or iPads, um, as I stated, right? And you can have Prism running on an actual uh, real-life computer POS type of thing. Works best if designed to use a touch screen, right? So if you have that functionality, you're ahead of the game. You don't have to. Um, you can point and click with the mouse. Okay, um, but all of these type of things are possible. When we're talking about a Prism workstation, um, there is an option where you can have a local database um, with a MySQL, right? So you could have an SQL database on here, okay, so that you're not having to go from Prism all the way back through the cloud um, to your V9. You can have something local um, so that, you know, if, God forbid, you lose internet, you're still semi-functional, okay? Um, Right, so all of these are different ways that PRISM can be deployed. It's a lot of flexibility. Most of um, what we're targeting um, for today, okay, is how do I use PRISM, okay, with this tablet device. All right, so we're going to minimize all that. I'm going to go find my PRISM, which is right here. Okay, so I've got this on a nice big white screen, um, but um, this is... Um, you know, th this is HTML, right? So um, if I take my big screen and I squeeze it in, okay, um, you can see how it auto adjusts, right? Um, one thing that Retail Pro doesn't do, or the you know version eight or nine doesn't do very well. Okay, and in case I didn't make this clear at the beginning, um, Prism only works with version nine. Um, does not work with with version eight. All right, so. Um, you can see if I, you know, drag this in and out, right, it changes the screen. I'm going to go into the transaction, uh, new transaction here, okay, and see if I squeeze this in, right, you can see how um, it auto adjusts, right. So I'm going to try to stay as big as possible here um, so that um, we keep our visibility here. All right. So, um, POS or uh, mobile POS with Prism. Okay, this is um, the, the the first application that Prism um, has uh, that they have tackled with Prism. Right now, it's pretty full featured, um, but um, the other functions that we're used to in Retail Pro, i.e., um, adding inventory, uh, vouchering, um, uh, 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 write and purchase orders, um, doing adjustments, all that kind of stuff. That's the you know the second uh, phase basically of Prism. But the POS uh, base is being deployed right now. Um, it's been out for a couple of years, um, and you know we have several installations, and you know we're sticking just with the POS, right? So um, this is the main screen when you log into Prism. Okay, these are the point of sale options here, right? So um, we're just going to go through a transaction um, here really quick and show you how it works, right? So I've got new transaction, okay, item lookup. So here's where you scan. Um, you can use the, um, the, the lookup like choose edit, um, okay, um, and then pick from a list if you want. Um, I have some items um, that 
I know exist, so I'm pretending like I'm scanning the barcode. Right? So you get the item listed. It tells you what it is, how much it is. Okay. All right, and so I list a couple of items on here. Okay, when I'm finished, I go to tender transaction over here, right, the big blue bar. I click on tender transaction. Okay, um, now um, we have it defaulted to assuming credit cards. That's an option um, that can be changed, um, which is kind of nice um, because these days when you're out um, with something mobile, generally people are dealing in credit cards and not cash. Okay, um, so if you're if this is what you're you're taking and you're taking the full amount, 380 bucks, right? Um, you just pick the type of credit card. Um, if you were um, using um, the the um, integrated credit cards, right? You would just hit the the um, the take button here, okay? And it would um, transfer control over to a Cayenne pin pad. Um, or the like, and you would complete the transaction over here. So you wouldn't be picking the type of credit card or anything like that in this regard. Okay, so I'm just verifying the tender here. So now over on the right, um, the transaction's completely paid for. Here's the forms of tender that I've used up here at the top. Okay, I'm going to hit the print and update button down here at the bottom. Okay, and I've set this so I have a dialog box so I can show you the options um, and this is all built into PRISM. So we have the option of allowing people to email. We have the option of allowing them just to preview it and not print it, or these can be turned off. Okay, so first um, I'm just going to hit the preview so you can kind of see what the receipt looks like, typical, right? And then here on the preview, I still have the choice of printing or emailing it or printing and emailing it, okay? Um, so um, basically you have your line items, um, you have the totals, um, if I scroll down here, um, you can see return policy. So essentially, um, this receipt um, looks a lot like um, what you're used to in Retail Pro. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm not going to bother printing it. Um, and now it automatically is, is programmed to automatically start a new transaction. So I'm up here in item lookup, right, um, and I can start a new transaction. All right, so. Um, well, let's go through just a little bit about how to alter um, uh, line items in, in uh, um, PRISM. So I'm going to look up um, an item. Okay, and then when I look it up, you can see this bar shows up, right? And so here's the choices. Here's what I can do um, on, on this install, right? I can take a discount. If I'm going to take a discount, I click discounts right here, okay? Um, and if I'm going to take a percent discount, click on the percent thing here, uh, type in my discount percent, okay, click the OK button, okay, and now I've got 10% off this item. Okay, so um, editing items in here is, uh, um, you know, easiest with the touch screen, right, touch the discount, okay, um, touch which kind of discount you want, uh, put in the percent, click OK. Okay, um, and now I've got a 20% discount. Okay, so um, if you're, um, you know, mistakenly put uh, something in twice, which happens sometimes when you're scanning, right? If I mis it mistakenly entered this item, right, I can remove it just by clicking the remove button. So now I'm back to that. Okay, so the editability um, is really simple. Let me get a couple more things in here. Okay, so you can see that every time I enter something, the last thing I entered is at the top with the modifier bar automatically here. Okay, so um, I can enter these items, right? I can go to tender transaction. Okay, um, this time I'm going to split tender. Okay, so if I click on tender type and I pick cash right here. Okay, I need to tell it how much cash. Okay, so I'm going to give him 100 bucks in cash. It's going to know I still need 542, right? So I can say MasterCard, uh, put 200 bucks on my MasterCard, and take that. 
Okay, now I still owe 342, so put the rest on my visa. Okay. All right, so now I've got 100 bucks on cash, 200 bucks on MasterCard, 342 on my visa. Interesting. Okay, um, and so now I'm ready to, to, to tender my transaction. Um, there is an update only button. Okay, and that can be controlled by permission if you need it to be, so that not just everybody can do that. Um, there is a gift receipt, right? So if I press gift receipt right here before I finish this transaction, it's automatically going to go through the gift receipt process um, that you're used to, right? So if I um, decide I need a gift receipt, I need to tell the system which um, item, right, that I need. Um, um, to have a gift receipt for. So uh, print uh, one. All right, so I just selected one of those items. Um, it works the same way as it does in Retail Pro, if you're familiar with the gift receipt. Pick um, either all items and one per receipt, or pick um, all items on the same receipt. Okay, you just make the decision before you finish the transaction, which is a little different than the way Retail Pro does it. All right, so I'm going to go to print update. Okay, um, here's my email. Um, I don't actually have a, well, I do have an email server set up here. Let's see. Um, I can email this to myself um, just by getting a, um, a, uh, an email address in there. All right. Okay, and then, yeah, so that was my gift receipt. Um, so I'm done here. Um, okay, so. Um, I should have in my email box, and it takes a little while. Um, I sent myself one um, earlier. Oh, there's my Foundry Logic one. Uh, don't have my Prism one yet. Okay. Um, just so um, you know, back when we were in the Foundry Logic, I emailed myself um, this receipt. Um, so that's the one from the MPOS that runs on the um, Apple product from Foundry Logic. Okay. So. Um, automatically starts a new receipt. Now, um, with um, with Prism, also um, you can control your customers, right? Um, so your customer search, right? Um, I am not sure what kind of customers are in here. Let's just take a peek. No customers. Okay. Uh, let's try just searching. Searching. Okay. All right, so we don't have any customers in here. Let's just add some. All right, so let's say we're in a new transaction already um, because the new is grayed out. We can tell that. Okay, so let's add a new customer. Okay. This is me. Okay, and you, um, this um, is optional um, if you wish. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here um, so that I don't have to type it anymore um, when I sell something to myself. Big. Three. Okay. All right. So that's all it takes to add a new customer. Okay, and list them on the receipt. All right. So now when I sell stuff, okay, um, it's going to go on to my transaction. Um, that new customer, because you added them in Prism, is going to go back and get added to your version nine. Okay. Um, so um, that um, is, is part of the customer capture uh, on PRISM. All right, so um, I've uh, created a transaction, right? I'm going to tender my transaction. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it on credit card because that's just the fastest. All right, okay, print and update. Okay, I'm just going to preview this. Um, so you can see customer information right here. Um, it's optional to print, you know, all the address slash email stuff on here, but we know that this was the customer um, and that they paid by credit card. Okay. Um, all right. So done with that transaction and back to this. Okay. So um, what we also like to show um, in here is um, how the returns work. Okay. I didn't do this in the Foundry Logic product. Basically, um, 
you highlight an item and put in a minus quantity when you do it on the Foundry Logic, just like you might do in Retail Pro, or change the transaction um, from a sale to a return. Okay. In PRISM, it is a little different. So by line item, um, you tell the system whether it's a sale or whether it's a return. Okay. So if I know I'm starting out with a return, I click on this return button right here okay, and tell it the next item you see is going to be a return. All right, so when that's yellow, that means that it is a, um, it's going to be a return when I enter the item. All right, um, if I'm going to search to try to find the receipt or uh, tag that item um, as being returned on that receipt, I can search for it. In this case, I'm going to say no. Okay, so um, you can see on the screen, right, um, and that there's nothing in red, there's nothing that says minus, this where it says type return right here, okay, that's the indication that this item has been returned, okay, so um, it uh, knows that it's a, you know, minus, and so if you're going to exchange, you turn it, you click on sale to make it back into sale and um, enter the item that they're going to be taking in its place, right, and in this case, it's an even exchange, it's a wash. Okay, so this item is the sale, that's what they're taking with them today. This item is the return, that's what they took, brought back, right? So, um, and basically I got the same thing here, but um, whatever. Um, if you needed to do this for inventory control, um, then, then that's how you would do it. Okay, um, and so if you're returning something and you wanna make sure that it gets um, tagged onto a customer, Okay, um, I'm going to look myself up, putting in my first name, clicking the search button. Okay, now I've got several choices, right, um, of who matches that. I'm going to select that one, okay, myself, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and tender. Okay, and because I've got um, a no money that needs to change hands, I can go to, right to uh, print and update or update only. Um, in this case, I'm just going to update only, so we don't need to look at the transaction. All right, so that's how you do um, a return just for an item. Okay, the other thing um, that's um, handy about uh, this is you can search for a receipt. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how that works. Okay, so if you know you're going to be returning something and you want to go straight to search for the receipt, okay, you click on the return, search for receipt. Okay, so once you do that, okay, um, now you have a filter, right? So um, if you know about when it was purchased, right, these uh, filters can be changed. Go back to April um, 1st, maybe. Okay, um, and if you know the actual document number, you can type it in. If you know the customer's last name, you can type that in, and it'll only look for this document or this customer um, within this date range. Okay, I don't have that much in here, so I'm just going to hit the search without putting anything else in. So now you can see all the transactions that were created that match these filters. Okay, I don't have very many. In the real world, you would have a bunch, right? Now, um, to be clear, these are only the Prism transactions, right? So if you have a Prism in a, um, a V9 as, as one of your uh, V9 POS. Anything that was entered in V9 um, is not available in PRISM for you to attach the receipt to. You could still return it, just be a line item, um, and you're not going to search for the receipt. Okay, but if um, you had this item here, right, transaction number 12, let's say, um, that you wanted to return, if you highlight it, you can see the items show up down here below, okay, and you can choose to um, check off a single item, right, so if I highlight this item and click POS return item, okay, now there's a green check that, and that item's going to be returned off of this receipt. Okay, so this lookup can be handy, particularly if you're returning a big long transaction and you want to show it, mark it as, as returned in PRISM, okay, um, and you'll know, um, you know, what the original discount amount was, you'll know all, you know, everything there is to know about this. Okay, um, and so when I, after I check this off and return to document, 
Okay, now you can see here there's a return um, for this item at whatever they paid for it on the, the, the previous receipt. Um, it's going to assume that you, that you might want to even exchange things out. Okay, if you don't and you're just returning it, um, then you just go to tender and tell the system how you're giving the money back. Right? So if you're crediting the credit card, um, you would do this. Um, tell me what credit card. Okay, and then uh, print and update. I'm just going to update only. So I'm back. Okay, so you know, in a nutshell, those are the basics um, of what uh, Prism can do. And uh, like we say, this is uh, something that you can put on uh, um, an iPad, uh, Surface Pro, um, you know, tablet type of device. Um, most of the people that we have are um, on some kind of touch screen, whether it's wireless or wired, um, because that's what this is really designed um, to, to do its best at. All right, so um, let me just bring up my um, thing here and see if there's anything else that I need to talk about. Okay, so I think that's it. Okay, so um, those are the basics um, of um, what PRISM can do in the Retail Pro 9 environment. Um, so um, we will be publishing this webinar out, and so any of you who had signed up um, will get an automatic email. Um, and, any, um, and, and this will be out on our YouTube channel hopefully within a couple of days. All right, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Oh, hey, you're still there. Yes.